hiding blueprints and fighting goons. That's right, it's the Rocketeer Fate of the Future from Funko Games. In this two-player tussle, players compete as teams of characters from Disney's The Rocketeer. Each team vies for control of the blueprint plans, the secret designs of the Cirrus X3 rocket pack. By controlling crucial locations around Los Angeles in 1938 and holding on to the plans, both players collect finale cards. At the end of the game, the player with the most points on their finale cards wins the game. Setup begins with choosing teams. One player dons the role of the heroes, while the other plays the villains. Players take their associated reference cards, character boards, personal decks, and turn order tokens. Place the game board so the heroes are on the red and gold side, and the villains are on the green and blue. Set the upper hand token on the Bulldog Cafe, set the Zeppelin board nearby, and place the Zeppelin on the Lakehurst space. Create a supply for the Grit tokens, Clout tokens, and Soldier tokens. Separately shuffle and place the current events and finale decks face down next to the game board along with the finale token. Each player sets up their play area by lining up their three character boards in a row, placing the matching turn tokens color side up on each board. Each character also starts with one grit token. Set the figures in the following locations. Cliff and Peavy at 1635 Palm Terrace, Ginny at the Bulldog Cafe, Sinclair and Lothar at Sinclair Mansion, and Valentine at the South Seas Club. The hero player sets the rocket token on the lowest space of the rocket skill track on Cliff's board and takes the three plans cards, which include one blueprint and two decoys. They secretly assign these cards face down, one under each of their characters. Both players shuffle their team's deck, placing it face down next to their character boards and draws up a starting hand of seven cards. Gameplay occurs in rounds, each divided into four steps. Reveal the current events, take character turns, gain rewards, and prepare for a new round. First, reveal the current events by drawing the top card of the deck and moving the Zeppelin one space towards Los Angeles for each Zeppelin symbol shown on the card. Each event has an effect as well. Follow the instructions as written. Then place the finale token on the location listed at the bottom of the card. Next, take character turns. Starting with the player who has the plans, players alternate taking turns with the characters one at a time until all have taken a turn. This is marked by flipping a character's turn token face down. On a character's turn, the active player may play cards from their hand, provided the card shows the character's symbol in the top left corner. Played cards are set in a discard pile next to the team's deck. They can also choose not to play any cards. Each card has symbols for the characters that can use it, a column of actions, and a box with an ability. When playing the card, the owner must choose one of the benefits to use, either the actions or the ability. The actions must be taken in order from top to bottom, although each action is optional. Abilities generally have a cost. To use it, the player must spend the number of clout tokens shown. Let's take a look at some of the action symbols in the game. Move. This action allows characters to go to a different location on their side of the board. The active character can move up to the number of spaces shown in the action symbol. After moving, the player also immediately takes the location action shown on their new location. Characters don't get to take the location action if they didn't move into a new location. Cliff's movement is slightly different in that he ignores the symbol's number and instead moves a number of spaces up to his current rocket skill. Tussle. This is the main fighting action of the game, allowing a character to attack opponents to hopefully steal the plans or gain control of a location. The active character chooses one opposing character at the same location to tussle. The player then calculates their tussle strength, which is the number shown on the symbol 
plus one for every grit token they wish to discard. Shields. The character being tussled can shield themselves from all or part of the tussle by discarding cards showing both a shield symbol and the tussled character symbol. For each card discarded in this way, the tussle strength is reduced by one. The tussled character must then discard as many grit tokens from their board as the final tussle strength. If they must discard when they have no grit remaining, the character is knocked out. Knocked out characters lay their figure down and flip their plans card face up. If it's a decoy, it remains face up. If it's the rocket blueprint, the opponent immediately takes all three plans and hides them amongst their three characters. Knocked out characters can't use actions or abilities, and on their next turn, the player must use one card with the character's symbol to stand them up, ignoring any abilities or actions on that card. That character can still use cards to take further actions on that turn. Gain grit, clout, or draw a card. These symbols allow the player to take the resources from the supply or draw a card from their deck into their hand, which they may immediately play. Clout is a shared resource amongst a team, but grit only goes to the active character. Draw a finale card. Gaining finale cards is the main objective of the game. This symbol allows the player to draw a finale card placing it in a face-down pile. The player may look at these cards at any time, but should keep them secret from their opponent. Raise Rocket Token. The hero player has this special action, which allows them to raise Cliff's Rocket Token one space on the Rocket Skill Track. Recruit a Soldier. The villain player has this special action, which allows them to place a soldier from the supply onto Sinclair's board. These soldiers are known as the Secret Army. More on that in a sec. After all characters have taken a turn, play proceeds to the Gain Rewards step. The player who holds the plans draws a finale card. Then, players gain rewards at locations their characters control. Control is determined by who has more characters at the location. Knocked out characters don't count towards this total. Ties result in neither player receiving a reward. The player who controls each location takes the reward shown on their side of the location. Some location rewards are specific to that location, including the observatory, which allows the controlling player to rehide the plans if they have them, or flip one plans card face up if their opponent has them. 1635 Palm Terrace provides one grit to each of the controlling player's characters, even if they're at another location, but Knocked out characters can't gain grit. And the Bulldog Cafe gives the controlling player the upper hand token, which allows them to draw an additional card at the end of the round. The player who controls the location with the finale token that was placed there at the start of the round draws a finale card. Additionally, some location rewards and card abilities provide bonuses for the player who has the plans. Finally, in the prepare for new round step, players flip all their characters' turn tokens face up again, discard any number of cards from their hand to their personal discard pile, and draw back up to seven cards. The player with the upper hand token draws an additional card. If a player's deck is ever empty, they just shuffle their discard pile to form a new deck, and a new round begins. The villain player can use the secret army to tussle the heroes for the plans and to control locations. But first, they need to get them on the board. The villain's deck contains secret army cards, which provide the ambush ability. This allows the villain player to bring any recruited soldiers on Sinclair's board to the center spots of any locations on the game board, one soldier per location. The first time this happens, the villain player flips the Valentine board to its secret army side. The secret army acts as a character and takes turns using the same symbol as Valentine, except they may only use the actions on each card. When playing a card, the villain player chooses one soldier to take the actions. Soldiers cannot take location actions, hold the rocket blueprint, or gain grit. If they lose a tussle, they retreat back to Sinclair's board. They can never be knocked out. 
Gameplay continues with heroes and villains roaming Los Angeles, knocking each other out, and stealing the plans. As players gain finale cards and control locations, the Zeppelin draws closer to the city each round. When it finally reaches LA, that round is the final round of the game. After gaining rewards, each player flips their finale cards face up and adds up their points. The player with the most points wins. Tiebreaker goes to the player with the most finale cards. And if it's still a tie, that means a win to the player with the plans. And that's the basics of the Rocketeer Fate of the Future. I'm Becca Scott, and you can find additional how-to-plays for other awesome games right here on Geek & Sundry. We'll see you there.